Hi, Dawi Maizel here in the logistical center of United Atzala in Beit Shemesh. In this short tour here, we'll get a better understanding of how our logistical center operates and supplies the volunteers with all of their needs. Our volunteers need to be equipped with all the life-saving equipment that they have on their ambucycles, on the ATVs, in their private cars and whatnot. This requires a big logistical chain in order to provide them with everything they need. So here, in this huge logistical center, we're actually going to see hands-on how things operate. How does this huge place actually work? So it has a few parts in it. So we're standing in the entrance where here we can actually see equipment that is being prepared to be sent out on our trucks to the volunteer centers. We can actually see a sign for a Beit Hamit Nadev, for a volunteer home in Baka El Garbia, in the Arab town of Baka El Garbia. It is being prepared and it will be shipped out to them for installation on their new volunteer home. We can see the pallets here prepared with equipment that is all going out to the volunteer centers. Inside it's divided into a few, uh, a few parts. You'll follow me and we can see over here is the assembly line. In the assembly line, we'll be able to see how they're actually putting the kits together, preparing the kits, the medical equipment for the volunteers. And then the aisles divide into a few different parts. We've got the whole aisle of just logistical equipment for those events in the, in the volunteer centers, etc. We've got all the equipment for Corona, for the COVID-19, um, dealing with that. We can see all these boxes up here are those PPE kits that have arrived and will be prepared into the kits for the volunteers to go out into the field and protect themselves while treating patients during uh, COVID-19. We've got our medical equipment uh, aisle, we've got our personal protective equipment aisle and not Corona related, rather we're talking about equipment like for the motorcyclists, their, their, uh, their protective jackets, the helmets and everything that has to do with that. And of course, the prepared kits that we see that are being prepared here will be stocked up over there and sent out to the volunteer uh, centers. We can actually see over here, they're working now on preparing um, uh, COVID-19 test kits for the volunteers that are out there working with the, uh, with the uh, patients, testing them for COVID-19. We've got a big pharmacy over here, which we'll, we will go into and see. And of course, the oxygen center and our garage. The garage is where we maintain all of our ambu cycles and make sure that they're fully operational, functional for the volunteers to go out there safe and sound. A few things happen here um, throughout the day and throughout the year. Uh, it's divided into a number of divisions, the logistical center itself. We're currently going into the area where they're packing the kits for the volunteers. You can actually see this is what a standard kit, life-saving kit of what a volunteer has carries in the in their car or in the ambucycle or on the or, or on the ATV given a purpose in life to work. So we can see here they're stuffing the kits here and packing them with all this life-saving equipment that we can see throughout uh, the shelves all around here. We can see right over there we're looking at the uh, IV equipment, we're looking at the glucometers, checking for sugar level that every volunteer is equipped with. We're looking at the life-saving um, uh, BVMs, the bag valve mask, which is a resuscitation device. And each one of these little parts throughout this room goes into this kit. Because when we talk about volunteers being equipped with everything that an ambulance has, except for the stretcher, this is where it happens. So the aisle we're walking down now is actually the aisle of the medical equipment. We can see kits that are prepared here that you saw on the assembly line. These are the kits that will be prepared, stocked up here, and then sent out on the trucks to the volunteer centers. As we go down here, we'll be entering our garage. So over time, activating over a thousand ambucycles, we understood that making right use of the resources is the right way to go. And we actually recruited volunteers who are garage professional, garage workers, mechanics that know how to treat and maintain uh, these ambicycles. So what we can see in here actually is a, an accumulation of a number of, uh, of motorcycles that we have here. Some of them are being treated, uh, refurbished, and prepared to go back out on the road for volunteers that will be using them. And some of them are being actually taken apart. Those that are four, five, three, four, five years old that have done their service and are going out of service, we actually take them apart and take every spare part that we can in order to use them on our ambicycles and make appropriate use of the resources. So follow me, we can actually see they're actually putting a, one of these ambicycles on the lift right now. We've got our amazing team of mechanics over here. 
that are also volunteers in the organization. And they, every day, nine to five are here. And even at night and during the weekends, when we have emergency need of care of these bikes, they immediately come over here and are able to treat these uh, ambicycles here, replace spare parts, and do any mechanical work that is uh, being done. We're in the aisle of the personal protective equipment for the ambicycle riders. We can see the jackets here, the fully protective uh, jackets for the ambicycle drivers. These fitted by size for each volunteer specifically. If we can see here on both sides, all of these um, jackets. We can also see actually some coats right over here, um, uh, some coats for the volunteers, helmets. We can see the helmets, brand new helmets for the volunteers over here. We've got the gloves for the riders. So over here we have our safe, um, which we keep the very super valuable and expensive equipment that needs to be protected. In here we can actually see We've got all of the new defibrillators. We've got all the new defibrillators over here, new, used. We just got a new shipment of all these defibrillators. Each defibrillator, you know, is thousands of dollars and all of this. And then they prepare them. They pull them out of here, prepare them on the assembly line and send them out immediately to the volunteers in the field. So we can see all of this equipment is protected over here. So we're now going into the, our pharmacy, our ALS department um, uh, medical equipment, which is a, a little bit separate from the central logistical center because it is supposed to be secured like a pharmacy and monitored because our volunteer paramedics and doctors are all equipped with this life-saving equipment of medication and advanced life support equipment. Follow me and we'll come inside and see how it's happening. So here they're already, uh, you can see an example of them assembling one of our medical um, uh, uh, kits of the medicine. Over here we can actually see this is built like any standard pharmacy. We can see the medications that we carry in here of all different types. So now we're going into the oxygen, uh, to the oxygen room where it's uh, the pressurized gas is actually used to refill our volunteers' oxygen tanks. You can see these are all of the uh, full oxygen tanks that have been refilled. You can see we have a whole setup here of the oxygen chambers and inside. And then we have the volunteers replenish their equipment in their Beit HaMitnadev, be it in Haifa, in Tel Aviv, in Jerusalem, or in Eilat. 